好了 ，Hello everyone. Good morning from CN China. Welcome to the Terracotta Army Digital Chinese Environment Program. Meet the Terracotta Army, understanding Chinese culture. I am Dong Yongying from Cedian University. This digital program is a collaboration between Cedian University and the Emperor Qin Shi Huang's Mausoleum Site Museum, which is formerly known as the Terracotta Army Museum. Sponsored by Shanxi Cultural Administration, we provide online Chinese language courses and museum education programs to international students. Since 2021, now we have been working with uh, schools from the United States, Japan, Korea, and other countries. Right now, now, I am at the Emperor Qin Shi Huang's Terracotta Army Museum, Xi'an, Shanxi Province, People's Republic of China. Okay, guys, do you know Xi'an City? Now, being an ancient imperial capital and eastern departure point of the Silk Road, Xi'an, formerly known as Chang'an, has long been important crossroads for people from throughout China. Central Asia and the Middle East, and thus a hub of diverse ethnic identities and religious beliefs. The central location of Xi'an in what is now the Shanxi province, near the confluence of the Wei and the Feng rivers, now which helps explain why this area was the site of several important imperial capitals for almost a millennium of Chinese history, such as Qin, Han, Tang, and other dynasties in China. Now among them, the Qin dynasty, which is from 221 BC to 206 BCE, is the first united Chinese empire. Qing Dynasty had its capital just north of this current city, where the impressive tomb complex of the Qing Empire was discovered, famously containing more than 7,000 terracotta statues and spread over some 45 square kilometers. So this is right here, the Emperor Qin Shi Huang's Muslim site middle. This site museum is a large on-site museum, which consists of two parts, the Terracotta Army Museum and uh, the first the Emperor's Muslim site park. In the site park, there were many other burial pits and a newly built museum, muse museum of the bronze chariots and horses. According to the historical records, the construction of this mausoleum lasted for 38 years and about 720,000 laborers were involved in a construction project. The mausoleum of the first emperor is one of the largest tombs in ancient China and he is the first and the only emperor to be buried with such a large number of burial objects. You know that discovered by chance in 1974 this group of more than 7,000 life-size terracotta warriors and horses forms only part of the elaborate tomb complex of the first emperor of China. Objects from here comprise most of the known surviving works from the Qin Dynasty and, the, and um, are some of the most important evidence researchers have for understanding the uh, artistic practices, uh, spiritual beliefs, and uh, political, military, and archaeological achievements of the significant period in Chinese history. The Terracotta Army Museum is an important part of the First Empress Muslim Site Museum and opened to the public on October the 1st, 1979. Behind me are the three famous military Peace. Well, today I am not the only guest speaker uh, for the students. 
Now, two of the museum educators, Ms. Zheng Xufei and Ms. Zhao Yuting, will join me to give you this working tour. Now, Ms. Zheng Xufei and I will uh, do the introduction, this working tour in this uh, Terracotta Army Museum, while Ms. Zhao Yuting at the Emperor Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum. Okay, now let's get started. Now, Ms. Zheng, welcome. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Emperor Qin Shi Huang's Terracotta Army Museum. Okay, guys, now this is one of the famous museum educators in this museum. We have been working uh, for a long time. Uh, okay, now she feels so we can see that today is so quiet. There are not so many visitors. Yeah. <laughs> we know that, yeah, the museums are currently uh, closed due to the current regulations of COVID-19 in CM. So it's a great privilege for us to visit this Terracotta Army Museum today, just for us, right? Yes. Thank you again. <laughs> sure, no problem. It's my pleasure. Uh, <laughs> shall we get started? Okay, please be please. Guys, this working tour will last for about one hour during our visit. Uh, should you have any questions, please leave your messages in the group chat. By the end of the lecture, there will be five minutes for interaction. Now we can answer your questions directly. As I introduced, this site museum consists of two parts the Terracotta Army Museum and the Emperor Qin Shi Huang's Muslim site park, where the emperor's tomb, that is also called the Muslim, is located. Our colleague, another museum educator, Ms. Zhao Yuting, is at the Emperor Qin Shi Huang's Muslim site park. Now, at first, let's invite her to give a brief introduction of, of this great Muslim. Okay, now, Yuting, Will you please introduce this Muslim first, and then we will go to the burial place here. Yuting. Now we have the Yuting at the Muslim. Hello, Yuting. Hello. Tonight. Hello, is the voice clear? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay, okay. Hello everyone, here I am at the uh, First Empress Muslim Site Park. Now let's take a look uh, at the, uh, uh, now let's take a look at the great wheel of the tomb. And this is, um, we are standing in front of the main tomb of the First Emperor. And this is his tomb mound. Uh, as we know, uh, the Muslim of the first emperor covers a, a huge area, about 45.69 square kilometers. And uh, it took the first emperor 38 years to uh, construct the project. So the, uh, there are about uh, 300 barrel pits and tombs have been found in his mausoleum. Uh, the core of the architectural complex is the tomb mound of the first emperor, uh, which buried his coffin and uh, numerous artifacts. Um, actually, um, the, uh, uh, the first emperor's uh, final resting place was based on the uh, first emperor's capital of Xianyang, uh, with inner and outer city walls surrounding the Mingtung Mound, uh, with a mountain called Li Shan. Uh, which is the mountain behind the tomb. And Li Shan uh, in ancient Chinese means the uh, black 
horses because a, the mountain looks just like uh, running black horses if you uh, look at it uh, from a distance. Uh, and with the Wei He River, which is one of the uh, largest uh, tributary of the Yellow River uh, at the opposite side, uh, which is to uh, the uh, north of the tomb of the first emperor, um, the home a Muslim enjoy a great environment. So why did the first emperor pick this place uh, as his final resting place? Uh, actually, mainly because of the geomancy. Uh, you know, according to the feng shui theory in ancient China, which people truly and deeply believed, um, they, uh, it, it is said that um, a grave, especially the emperor's grave, uh, should be um, buried. Uh, should be buried with a pl uh, with a place surrounded by the rivers and mountains, especially um, and by choosing a place with certain height and depth, uh, because it could bring the owner wealth and rank in the uh, afterlife. So, uh, uh, what's actually inside the uh, the tomb. Uh, you can see it's a pyramid shaped and uh, consists of two parts. The uh, underground part, uh, the underground and above ground structure. So uh, the uh, above ground structure is just look like a green hill and the the original height of it was one point uh, was 115 meters tall and now only 70 uh, 76 meters high uh, after 2000 years of wind and rain erosion um so what's inside the tomb uh, except for except from uh, except for his tombs and uh, the coffin of the first emperor, it is said the tomb was deep and filled with uh, numerous treasures inside. Also contains many traps against uh, stealings from tombs robbers. In addition, it filled with uh, mercury to symbolize rivers and and lakes. So this has, has been proved by uh, excavations in uh, recent years. So with the pyramid shaped tomb in the middle of the, uh, the, the whole mausoleum, uh, the tomb was surrounded by lots of uh, burial pits and tombs. Uh, for, uh, there are several tombs are, um, are showing to the public for now. Uh, for example, uh, pit number six, which contains uh, four chariot, uh, which contains four civil officials and uh, uh, eight charioteers. Uh, another example, uh, pit 9901, which contains the uh, about 30 acrobats, which considered to be the acrobats who uh, served for the first emperor in his imperial palace. And the famous one, uh, which known as the top bronze work in ancient Chinese, China, China, uh, which are two, uh, which were two bronze chariots and horses that were uh, discovered in the 1980s, and they are all showing to the public uh, now in the uh, in, in the uh, first emperor's uh, site park. So that's all about the mausoleum. Now let's get back to the Terracotta Army Museum. Hello guys, I'm here back to the Terracotta Army Museum. It is about 1.5 kilometers east of the first Emperor Qin's mausoleum. And behind me, this mountain called Li Shan. And Li means, in Chinese character, means that the black horse and Shan means mountain. So look at Li Shan. Does it look like a black running horse? Doesn't it? Yes, it really looks like a running house. Okay, now we are in front of the famous terracotta army uh, number one pit. Yes, now let's go inside. Uh, guys, before we begin to visit this, I would like to mention that um, about the ancient Chinese objects. Now, objects from ancient China are in the present day often referred to as art. However, it should be noted that what is called art was not necessarily made at the time as fine art. Many of these objects had ritual or practical functions, were new, but gradually became valued for their aesthetic qualities. 
So we can say uh, what these terracotta statues were when they were made. Oh, wow, we are here. Imagine you are, you are here, right? It is really splendid, Xufei. Yes. Now we are just standing in front of the pin number one. And you can imagine that thousands of the soldiers travel thousand years and stand in front of us and telling the stories in the Qin Dynasty. It's very huge, right? And this pit covers a total area about 14,000 square meters and in the rectangular shape and uh, roughly uh, the size of two football pitches. And uh, the whole pit is covered in 1974 when some farmers uh, uh, digging the well in such water. Yes, so the site of the wall is over there, right? Now, please, now our cameraman, can you just uh, uh, show that front. site over there? Yes, in the front, uh, on the, the front. left corner. corner. So thank you to this farmer. Now mm -hmm. we had this great uh, terracotta statues discovered in 1974. Okay, so if you just said that the site of this area of pit number one is about the two uh, size of the two football. Yeah, two uh, football pitches. Okay, so how, I mean, what's the length and uh, why? Oh, the, we have to mention the, the structure of the mm. pit here. The structure in the pit called the earth and wood structure in the shape of tunnel. And it seems like a big underground building is 2,000 years ago. Yeah. And it, you can imagine that 2,000 years ago, the pressman firstly dig a huge pit, and it is about 230 meters long. And 230 60. meters long. long. Yes. Wow, and that is from the east to the back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 62 meters wide. 62 meters wide. From the south to north. Yeah, guys, now we are in the east of this pit. Mm -hmm. And uh, this direction is east. And uh, the site of the well is uh, the south, in the, the south, south. On the left. Uh, in the south. Okay, so from the south to the north is 62 meters long. Yes. And uh, it is about five meters deep from the present level ground. So we are above, yeah. uh, where we are above this pit, that is five meters deep. deep. Uh, that is uh, from the underground is about five meters deep. Mm -hmm. And uh, then 10 ramped partition wall were built and to divide the whole pit into 11 corridors. Okay, so you can see that guys, they, uh, there were some walls in between these warriors and they are called the partition walls. Mm -hmm. So there were 10 partition walls yes. and they divided this uh, uh, pit into 11 corridors. Mm -hmm. So the soldiers and the horses, uh, they are now in the corridor. We call them corridors. Yeah, yeah. they are all mm -hmm. arranged in the corridor. Mm -hmm. And the floor of the corridors were all paved with the bricks, the Qin bricks 2000 years ago. Okay, they are just standing the place they were uh, in 2000 years ago. Wow. And also the partition wall was a major force to support the wooden roof on the top of the wall. Uh, so uh, after they built the partition wall, then they will cover the cross beams to be the roof. Okay, so we can see that there was some um, traces of the uh, cross beams. Yes. I right? say so they, uh, they were uh, just covered uh, mm -hmm. by the earth and, uh, and mask. as a mask. So this is the underground building. And also on the both sides of the pit, there, is a, uh, there are five sloping roadway. Uh, that is sloping, the uh, sloping roads. Road. Sloping Road roads. Uh, yeah. Now sloping roads means that they uh, just they help to, to carry these warriors and uh, horses uh, into these corridors. Yes. And after they were carried here, and the sloping ways would be sealed. sealed. Mm -hmm. mm. So this is the underground building of the terracotta pits. And oh. uh, yeah, and also look at uh, all the figures. Uh, they are just like the real, the, the real size of the life-sized. Their average height is around 1.8 meters high. 1.8 meters, that's about five feet and nine inches. Yes. So were, the, were 10 people tall and big 2,000 years ago? Actually, the height would measure uh, from the, the, the top of the knot and to the bottom of the pedestal under the, uh, the paltry figure's feet. 
So uh, their original height is around 1.6 meters. Uh, that is around uh, five feet, uh, four inches. Uh, okay, so that is still lot, uh, tall, yes. Uh, so that is why we call them the life-size statues. So imagine guys, there were about 7,000 life-size statues in this museum. That's really magnificent. And uh, Xu Fei, now you just said that the soldiers, now they were just uh, made uh, during the Qing Dynasty. So pit number one, we can say is a military pit. Now, what is the battle formation arranged here? That's a good question. <laughs> the formation in pit number one consists of four main parts. Uh, the vanguard, the flanks, the rear guard, and also the main body. And Okay, so there are some military terms. The vanguard. Yes, vanguard. Vanguard means the soldiers in front of this battle formation. Yes. And the flanks are the on both soldiers sides. on both sides. Mm -hmm. And there are also the, the rear, rear, rear guard that is at the back of this pit. Yeah. So that is why we say that the pit number one is arranged as a military formation. Mm -hmm. So if you can just uh, observe them uh, carefully, you can see the different four directions. Uh, the soldiers, they are facing at in different directions. Yeah. In the front corridors, there are three lines of the soldiers and they are the vanguard. And uh, 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 they are actually, they are the archers just in the pit armed with the uh, longbows or the crossbows. And behind them, just uh, uh, on the both sides of the pit, we can find there is a line of soldiers and facing to us. So they are flanks. Yes, they are the flanks. And they are the guard from the, uh, uh, to prevent attack from these two directions and also the rear guard. And behind the vanguard in the 11 corridors, they are the main body and of the formation consists of two kinds of soldiers the infantry and also the charioteers. Uh, the infantry is the footman. Yeah. Uh, the charioteers, uh, they are just uh, the soldiers who uh, fight, uh, fight it on the chariot. On the chariot. Now, uh, I just mentioned that there is a museum of bronze chariots and horses in the Muslim side part. Mm -hmm. So uh, that says, there are two sets of that bronze chariots and horses there. They were made of the bronze. bronze. So what about the chariots here? Uh, the chariot in terracotta army piece were all made of the real material, wood. So wood. the year passed by and all, most of the wooden part was decayed. That's the reason why we couldn't see the chariot in the paint now. Okay, so there are still some remains of the chariots here. Yes. And uh, now we can see that the soldiers must have held some weapons mm -hmm. when they were made. Look at their gestures. their holes, their yeah. gestures, right? So, but where are they now? Did the archaeologists find some weapons here? And uh, till now, over uh, 40,000 of bronze weapons have been found in the terracotta army pits. 40,000, yes. that is a lot. Yes. But most of the weapons, uh, uh, especially the handle of the weapons, was made of wood, yes. so they were decayed. Uh, what about the top? Uh, sorry? Some, some, I mean, that the weapons, they were made of the bronze, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, the top part was made of part. bronze. And uh, could you... Uh, yeah, we just have some yeah, pictures some to pictures. show uh, to the students about uh, uh, the weapons when they were discovered here. Mm -hmm. So Qing Qing, will you please uh, give the pictures to the students? Now, while well, the students have a look at these pictures, now we can invite Xu Fei to give us some introduction about these weapons. There are yeah. different kinds of the weapons, right? Yes, according to the different func function and the, the weapons were divided into three types. The long shaft weapons, the short weapons, and the long distance weapons. And firstly, uh, we can see there is a picture just to show the long shaft weapons have been excavated in the, the terracotta army pits. And we can find some, some uh, familiar long shaft weapons, the halberd and the Bears, and most of them was just armed by the infantry and the charioteers. It can uh, it can use to uh, spear and also cut. And also the next picture we can find some short weapons. There is a very special one, uh, the bronze hook. Uh, it is in the shape of the crescent moon, and uh, the top is flat. And on the both sides 
of the uh, the, the hook, uh, there are blades and can use to cut and hook. And till now, only two bronze hook have been excavated in the pit. And the next one is the very famous bronze weapons, the Qin sword. Sword, Qin sword. Yes, mm. the bronze sword. Mm. And till now, only 24 bronze swords have been found uh, in the terracotta army pits. And uh, uh, it was not only used for the close combat, and also it's the symbol of the status that in the Qin Dynasty. Wow, that's uh, really uh, in details about the introduction of the weapons, right? Yeah. And the long, long shaft weapons, uh, long shaft weapons, and uh, the short, short weapons, short weapons, and also the long range weapons. The picture of the triggers and also the bronze arrows. Wow. Okay, now we, uh, we can see that there are just uh, the different areas in this pit number one. Yeah. Uh, so we just uh, had the warriors who had been restored and uh, uh, conserved over there, right? Mm -hmm. But what about this area? Uh, this area is there the- You haven't been excavated. It, this part is the uh, the latest excavation area and uh, uh, the ongoing excavation area in pin number one. So here we can find some modern tools in the pit. And uh, in the work days, some archaeologists, they are still doing the excavation in the pit. So here you can see the structure of the pit very clearly and also some pieces of the pottery figures. And on the right side here, they have selected some fig, the pieces of the horse, of the horses, and try to assemble them to, together. Okay, so these horses, they are uh, in the process of restoration. Yeah. So this leads to our last part of this pin number one. Now, guys, please look at there. Now, we just uh, had a relic hospitals over there. That is uh, our next uh, World to field trip, the relic hospital of the Terracotta Army, uh, the P number one on site restoration. Yes. But now you can see that. Now, this is the area just for restoration. So here you can find thousands of the pottery figures, and most of them were just uh, finished, restored, and ready to be bad to put back uh, in their original place in the front part of pin number one so they are waiting to be ready to be put back where they were from yes all of the soldiers after they were being uh they are being restored and they would be put back to where they were discovered mm -hmm. And uh, most of the uh, warriors, they were excavated, excavated from the front area. Until now, only one third of pin number one have been excavated. So the middle part and the rear part, especially the restoration area, they are still uncovered. And still are some pottery figures buried underneath. So the, the excavation is still ongoing? Yes. Okay, so for this uh, next, uh, uh, field trip, uh, we have invited the famous uh, restaurant conservator, Mr. Lan Dersheng. Now he will introduce the process of how to restore uh, the terracotta statues. So don't miss that. And uh, this is uh, pin number one. So we can see that this is the underground military for Emperor Qin Shi Huang. But guys, have you wondered? <laughs> Do you wonder now where the commanding officer is? If it were a military, right? Is um, uh, there were so many soldiers. So where is the uh, commanding general? That's so you, a good question. Tell us. <laughs> we will just uh, I, I will answer you in the next page, page number three. It is a commander which headquarters the whole underground army. So we are heading to the pin number three, but you, you might have the questions and the why the uh, pins were, uh, they were just named by numbers. Yeah. Now, uh, can you... The pin number one was discovered in 1974 and after 
after the excavation to the archaeologist uh, digging around and then found the other two pits only 20 meters and 25 meters uh, north of the pit number one. And uh, then, and this pit, this two pit uh, was just named by the order of their discovery. So pit number one, two, three. So there's the three military burial pits. They are close to each other. Yes. The pin number three, just right after this pin number one. Yes. And we are heading to pin number three. Yeah. And you can find the answer to our previous questions. Mm -hmm. Where the commanding general is. And when we just walk to the pin number three, and you will find some characters just on the tip light of the pit. That is the characters they used in the Qin Dynasty when the first emperor unified the whole China. He standardized the the written scripts, the small seal script. Qin small seal script. Yeah. And uh, you can look at the template of the characters uh, from the right to the left. Qin Bing Ma Yu San Hao Kung Yi Zhi. Okay, that is, that is uh, Qin Emperor number three, Pete. Uh, we are waiting the security to open the door. As I introduced, uh, this museum is currently closed to the public uh, due to the, uh, the current regulations of the COVID-19 NCM. And normally, <laughs> I mean, on normal days, there would be thousands of visitors to this museum. So the, what was the, number of the visitors to this museum averagely uh, on, that on normal is, days? Uh, that is around six million of the visitors. Six million yes. per year? Yes. So you can imagine, guys, right? There would be so many visitors every day in the each piece. But today, there's nobody, just us. <laughs> <laughs> so we are so lucky. Yeah, this is the VIP tour. We VIP tour, <laughs> yeah. And now we just uh, uh, walk into the pit number three. And it is the latest one, also the smallest one, uh, only covers uh, an area about 500 square meters and contains 68 pottery figures. So they are the pottery figures. Uh, you, didn't, uh, you, you didn't tell that they are soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see that the guys can you observe them carefully. Are they real soldiers or not? You can find some different difference. And to this pit is uh, just in the letter U shaped, the letter U shaped and it consists of three chambers. And on the left, uh, it is uh, a south chamber. And here we can find some pottery figures they will have, uh, they have been already restored by the archeologist. And to look at the formation here, that is quite different from the formation in pit number one, right? Mm. And they are all back to the wall and face to face. So they are face to each other. Yes. Uh, they are not in the military formation. Mm -hmm. And showing that they are protect a very important place. And, and also just in their hands, we found a kind of weapons called bronze shoe. And uh, this weapons is also a kind of the long shaft weapons. But on the top, uh, the bronze piece was made of the inner shape of the cylinder. And this kind of weapons was used for the guarding honor at that time, not for the real fighting. So they are the ceremony. Yes. Ceremony soldiers, guards. Uh. So from this, uh, the experts believe that this room is a, 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 a room for meeting at that time. And also in the middle of the pit here, and uh, uh, there is a wooden chariot to have been excavated here. And on the chariot, well, you can count how many passengers, how many soldiers are on the chariot. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, right? Four, four, yeah. yeah. And uh, commonly, most of the chariots, they were all directed by two or three soldiers. But here we found four. That is quite special, it's very unique and showing that the chariot is just in the high status. Okay, now Sufi just said that in pit number one, 
uh, we can see that the charioteers were accompanied by two soldiers. The charioteer is in the middle, now with two soldiers on the two sides. Yes. But here now we can see that there were four uh, uh, on one set of the chariots mm -hmm. and horses, right? So which means that this one is a uh, higher rank. Yeah. And also the uh, chariot, ch chariot was decorated with the beautiful patterns and there is a big round canopy on the chariots. And from all of this, uh, it is believed that, that this chariot was used for sending order in the Qin Dynasty. Sending orders. Yes. And here on the right side, there is another chamber, the North Chamber. Besides of the pottery figures uh, have been found and uh, there are also some real animal bones and the deer antler have been found here. And do you know uh, what the function of the antler? Yeah, now do you remember that what I, at the beginning of this working tour, I said that the uh, objects when they were made at that time, now they had the ritual or practical functions. Uh, so uh, the remains that we had found here is uh, uh, some an antler. Antler. They, they, uh, this kind of antler was. Uh, the Asian people believes that antler was it was a kind of good things can communicate with the god. So that was used for divination, and uh, also combined with the real animal bones. Maybe this room was just used for sacrifice. And before the battle, they prepare the things and pray to the god for success. So this room is the sacrifice room. Okay, now uh, there is another artifact uh, that had been found here that is for helping to move the tools, right? So there is no uh, findings. Uh, there, there are not the uh, soldiers on the battlefield and, uh, and also according to some other evidence found here. So this pit, now according to the archaeologist, uh, now could be regarded as uh, heading, uh, headquarters, the headquarters. Yeah. Uh, so now we can see that pit number three is most likely the uh, command center uh, mm -hmm. of this entire army. But no figure of the commanding general had been found. Uh, so who, can you just uh, reveal the answer? Now, who is the real commanding general, Sibe? And, uh, you know, just uh, uh, in Qin Dynasty, uh, when there's no battle and all the military force was just saved, uh, seized by the emperor himself. And uh, there is a very uh, important thing called Hu Fu was used at that time. Hu Fu, could you... Uh, could, could, could uh, you just... Now, Qin Qin, can you just uh, show the picture yes, of Hu Fu? Picture. The tiger uh, shaped the tiger tally. Shaped tally. And uh, that was uh, issued to the general uh, to ask uh, in, in Imperial, could you see the picture? The picture of Hu Fu. Wait for a moment. Now the Hu Fu is a tiger shaped to tell it. Uh, the tally would be divided into two, two halves. halves. Uh. And that was used uh, to, uh, to the general as an uh, imperial, imperial authorization, which was used to, to the troop, to the troop, to the troop movement in the Qin Dynasty. It can be divided into two halves. And the right half was just kept by the central government and the left was kept by the commander. And it, it could be effective when these two pieces uh, uh, just a check to be the complete one. And after the battle, in the general, the, the, the commanding general should return the right half back to the central government. And from all the excavation air, uh, just in this three pit, and we can find that all the soldiers, they are ready for fighting. So maybe it's the first emperor, and he is the real commander, the real general, of the whole underground army. Yes, yeah, so archaeologists estimated that the Emperor Qin Shi Huang would have been the commanding center, a general of this terracotta army. Yes. Right, so these soldiers, they were waiting for the orders from the emperor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, pin number three. Now let's go to the pin number two.
So you can see how close is the three piece uh, to each other. Yes, only 20 and 25 meters. So they are military barrier piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, just as the Ms. Zhao Yuting introduced it at the mausoleum, there were some other barrier piece at the mausoleum site park. Yes. They are different. Yes. Uh, and the, uh, these three ones are the military ones. Yeah. And there, ha there are some new discoveries at this mausoleum, such as the uh, acrobat pit. Uh -huh, look. Uh, uh, official, the official, the uh, civil official pit, and uh, the bronze water birds pit. Uh, and, yeah, and there is a new museum, uh, the bronze chariot and, and horses, horses museum, just uh, opened in the Muslim complex. Uh, that one were also excavated uh, at this Muslim site park. Yes, and now we walk into the pit number two. And this pit was discovered in 1976 and opened to the public in 1994. And uh, uh, the, this pit is only half of the pit number one, uh, the 6,000 square meters. That is still large. Yes. Like half of this pit number one. And to form the L shaped. I had been to this museum for hundreds of the time, <laughs> but this is really a uh, the first time that uh, we are waiting for the uh, guards to open the museum, to open the place for us. That is really great privilege. Okay, so we can just uh, have, a uh, have a general view of this bit number two. It is hard to, to I mean, to get the information by yourself, um, but we just had a layout here. Mm -hmm. So this can help to explain the formation, the layout of this pit number two. So Mr. Zhang Kai, can you just, just show this layout? And now uh, this is the position. Now we are here. And uh, according to the excavation work, we have found this pit is quite special. And uh, it, uh, it, we have found the more complicated and more complete military force in this pit and uh, consists of four different battle formation. And here we are facing to the biggest formation, the charioteers formation it is in the square shaped. And there are over uh, 64 wooden chariots have been excavated here. And uh, this one is the mixed formation. The formation is similar to the main body in pain number one and consists of the infantry man and the charioteers. But at the rear part of the formation, we found some uh, cavalry, the pottery ca cavalry. And here, this is a cavalry formation and the fall of the cavalry with the horses together. And it, but they are not ri riding on the horse, but standing beside the horse. And this one is the archer formation. And we found the two different gesture of the archers, the leading archer and standing archer here. So this four battle formation, they can fight uh, just a, a single light and also can fight a combined together to fight. That is the difference between the pin number one and pin number two. So we can see that this four battle arrays make up a flexible military unit yes. on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. So they could either act in coordination as a single unit or separate into individual units, depending on the situation and the geographical context. Yeah, but most of the pit number two are still uncovered, so we can find the big remains of the beams on the top of the wall. Well, there were some stars, mm -hmm. <laughs> some objects, uh, we call them stars. Now they were just uh, uh, covered uh, and earthed uh, from the pit number two. Yeah. Now let's go there. And this is the corner of the restoration of pit number yeah, two. Yeah, this is another restoration area. So which means that the workers, the staff, they are working here. Yeah. So the visitors can see that what are they doing in the pit. So this is on site, a large Muslim uh, site museum, uh, which uh, uh, well they um, exhibit these objects 
the museum just want to show the excavations as well. Yeah. So exhibition, excavation, uh, they are uh, at the same time. And here are the stars. We are going to see the uh, different soldiers excavated from the pit. We can get, get closer to, to see the soldiers and the officials excavated from these three terracotta army pits. Yeah, these soldiers, they just have different uh, war robes and have different uh, hats. So which means that they have the different ranks. Now let's come to the first one. Now, guys, now will you please observe this figure and uh, just uh, trying to find out uh, the details and let us know what you have think. You can type your answers in our group chat. You can use the elements of art. What's the position of this figure? Do we get answer from these students? Huh? Archer, yes, some students said it's an archer. Great, right? Now, so you can see that this uh, figure is in a kneeling position. So his name is the kneeling archer. So how do you know that? Now this is an archer from the position of his, fan, uh, of his hands. Correct. So this kneeling archer now was discovered in pit number two. The archer is in a kneeling position with his right hand, uh, with his right knee on the ground and his left knee raised. His right arm is held with his hand opened, where the left arm rests on his raised left knee. So the poster of this statue suggests that he originally held a crossbow in preparation to shoot. So together with a standing archer, now they make up the army's archery formation uh, in this pit number two. And kneeling archers are in the center of the formation where standing archers are placed around them. So now let's look at his archers uh, more, uh, I mean, in details. So you can see that this archers wears armor. The stackling of the armor pieces meets the requirement of the actual combat. Now you can you find the difference of the stackling of the armors uh, at first, uh, for the chest picture, uh, chest piece of the armor, for the chest, uh, we can see that the top piece stacking the down one. The abdomen is in the opposite direction, same uh, in the arm armor. So we can see that the design was reasonable to have archers to move freely no matter bending, expanding, uh, expanding the chest or raising the arms. Now let's look at his hair. You can see that the soldiers, all of the soldiers, they just had long hairs. Have you ever wondered why uh, the soldiers, they had long hairs? You know that's in Asian China. We can see that uh, they, they long hair and the skin. Uh, we saw that they were the gift by the parents. So the long hair is a way to show the respect to parents. So we can see that the way of the braiding and the knot of the hair band are highly detailed. Okay, that is uh, the top, right? Now let's come to the shoe. Uh, if you look closely at the sole of the kneeling artist's shoes, now you will notice, you can say, 
it, it is complete with head for traction. The stitches on the heel and toe are dense. And the middle part of the sole is sparse. So we can see that it provides for greater traction when walking. Now this kind of shoes, uh, we also made today uh, this kind of shoes. We adapt this method. So which is labor saving and uh, wear resistant. So this is one of the stars here. Now his name is the kneeling archer. Do you have any questions? Okay, now let's go to the next one. Okay, guys, the next one is an officer excavated in the terracotta army pits. So firstly, please observe these pottery figures and find the differences between the an officer and to the knitting archer, the common soldier we have found in the pit. This pottery figure is very strong. It is six feet, five inches. And look at it. Look at him, we can find that he is wear a beautiful headgear, the pheasant feather headgear. It is decorated with a bird's feather called He, and this kind of bird is very good at fighting. So this kind of pheasant feather headgear is a kind of symbol of the status of him. And also he wears a different armor compared with a calm soldier. He wears a fish scale armor and probably made of metal at that time. And under the armor, he wear two layers of the long robes. And look, when you just uh, look at the pottery figures um, and maybe you wonder to, how did they did them made 2000 years ago? And all of the pottery figures, there are different parts of their body that were made separately with the molds firstly, and then grave the details, such as their hands, arms, legs, and their torso, their body are quite different. That was sculptured with the trips of the clay one after another. So their body are hollow. And their heads are half hollow and half solid. And here, nose, ear were made separately and then stick on and grape the details. For example, look at the high ranking officer's forehead. We can find some wrinkle on his forehead, right? And also we found different facial hair just on the face of the pottery figures. The beard, the full beard, the goatees and mustache. And compared with the common soldier, could you find some difference and some change among these two figures, the common soldier and the uh, official? He's elder and stronger, right? And in the Qin Dynasty, there is a very popular meritocracy military system, and uh, which can just encourage the soldier to be brave in the battle. And so, the more enemies he kill and higher ranks they will get. So we can find the high ranking officer, he's more experienced. This is the middle ranking officer. The rank is lower than the high, high one. So they wear different hats. Yes. Now let's look at this one. Can you say this one? Now does he wear the hat, not hat? Now in Chinese, we have the guan, mm -hmm. right? 
And this is the cavalry excavated from the pit number two. Cavalry, that is a horseman. Yes. So we can say that there is a soldier. Now he was holding his horse, mm -hmm. cavalryman. And look at the uniform. That is quite different from the common soldier. He wear a leather, a leather hat and the shorter armor and also the boats, the leather boats. The uniform can let him just move freely just on a horse. So this one, uh, this is a cavalry man. Now he also wears a small tight fitting cap that is uh, fastened under his chin. So we can see that this whole outfit shows that the flexibility and the convenience, mm -hmm. right? Because he's a horseman. Uh, now, if he just wear the long war robe and the heavy armors, it will be hard for him to jump on the horse. Yes. Mm. And also look at uh, uh, look at his height. Now we know that it was written uh, in uh, one of the ancient Chinese books, that is Zhuoti Zhe book on the Han Dynasty about fundamental rule to select a cavalryman. Now he needs to be taller than 1.773 meters. Yes. Uh, and also be very strong and agile. Uh, otherwise, now he couldn't jump up <laughs> on the horse. <laughs> yeah, on a horseback. So look at his cavalryman. Now we can see that he is about 1.8 meters, uh, that is five feet and nine inches tall. And uh, he's really strong and uh, handsome, right? Yes. <laughs> like a really experienced cavalry man. Mm -hmm. And also look, look at the, the, his face. We can find some original colors. Yeah, to talk about the colors, we just got a question from the uh, students, uh, they asked uh, what about the colors of the warriors. Most of the warriors, they had the green colors, but some do have some uh, different colors. So what happened and what's that? Where were the colors gone? Actually, when these pottery figures were excavated, they're all colorful. And we have some pictures okay, just uh, in the chat rooms, the colors of the pottery figures. And they all have the black hair and pink skin and wear the black armor and under the armor, they wear the very colorful uniform. But all of the colors, they are on the surface of the pottery figures and all painted after they were baked in the oven. And uh, uh, they were all just experienced uh, both the, the human dis uh, destruction, the de destruction and also uh, the nature decay. So they became very sensitive and uh, fragile. And when these pottery figures were excavated and exposed to, to the air, uh, and uh, most of the colors, and they were just uh, suddenly shrieking and flaking off just on the surface of the pottery figures. And without protection, it will just, uh, the colors will fading away only in two to three days, very short time. But now we have the successful technology to protect the colors on the surface. And when these colors excavate, the experts, uh, archaeologists, firstly spread the chemical liquid called PEG 200. And it always appears in the women's skincare, skincare product and can reinforce uh, the water, the moisture, moisture just in the colors and it can prevent the colors shrinking and peeled off from the pottery figures. So that is one of the most advanced technology that was invented by the archaeologists in this museum. Yes. But right now, all of the colorful soldiers, statues, and then they were uh, kept in the laboratories. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a laboratory in this museum. And uh, for all, most of the soldiers uh, in the piece, uh, they, are, they just lost their colors. Yeah. not used to the quiet museum. <laughs> You're like, it is so crowded. Okay, guys, do you have any questions? You can type your message in the group chat or you can just talk with us directly. Okay, I got some questions here. 
does each of the soldiers have different faces? Yes, they're just like the real soldier. They have the different faces and different gesture, wear the different uniform, and also, also some details. They have the different hairstyle and different facial hair. So made very detailed. It is a um, realistic impression of this uh, army. Uh, it is realistic. Another question? Were the figures painted when they were first made? Yeah, mm. and uh, all of the pottery figures, they were uh, made after they were disbaked in the oven. And uh, the pressman will paint, firstly paint a layer of the lacquer to be the base and then paint the different colors on the different parts of their body. And after they were finished, they were all colorful, just like the real people. Yes, another question is, what did the emperor think that all the soldiers would do, that they would protect him after he died? That is about the, our Asian China's belief. Mm -hmm. So can you explain that to us? The Asian Chinese, they believe that when a person's life ended, their soul and spirit lived on in afterlife. So that's the reason why the first emperor just wanted to bring everything with him just in his afterlife. This huge underground oh, yeah. army Unlocked. was used to protect his uh, Muslim in the underground world. So that is in Chinese is shi si ru shi sheng. Uh, shi means serve, serve the people uh, when they died as if they were alive. Yeah. Okay, so Emperor Qin Shi Huang wants to have everything with him in his afterlife, not only the soldiers, yes. uh, but also the other, other uh, objects, including the officers, uh, the, uh, yeah. the bronze chariots and the horses, the, mm -hmm. the, the birds, uh, the civil officials, the acrobats. Yeah. And so the new discoveries, next time, you, if you have a chance to come to visit this Chakot army, don't miss the new discoveries in the Muslim side part. Okay, how long did it take to build them? 38 years. Yes. Yeah. When Emperor Qin Shi Huang became the, the king. Now, before he became the emperor, he was a king, right? When he uh, succeeded the throne as a king when he was nine years old, mm -hmm. now he began to build this mausoleum. So it took about 38 years. And um, who made these soldiers? Oh. That's a very good question. <laughs> Actually, we have some pictures to show the craftsman who made the pottery figures. Uh, and on yeah, the Qing, can you just show the pictures with the characters inscribed on the figures? Yeah, we have some found, uh, have some some uh, characters just uh, on the surface of the pottery figures below their robe on on their chest, and this character shows that the craftsman's name who made the figures. So we can find some pictures. And uh, the single character, uh, that is a craftsman's name. Can you recognize? The De and Chao, that is the name of the craftsman who made the figures. And also some other uh, uh, fig uh, characters with two. And uh, uh, for example, Gong Cang. And uh, Gong is a pre-mixed uh, pre character just to show that where he is from. Gong means palace. So some of the craftsmen, they work as the come from the, uh, the government workshop, but others such as Xianyang Yi, and Xianyang is a place name that shows that the craftsman was just uh, come from the, uh, the, the, the workshop, the local workshop, and, uh, uh, and Xianyang is the capital of the Qin city. Okay, that's great, right? So are there any plans to restore colors? Yeah, we have the successful technology to protect the colors now. Yeah, so uh, for all majority of these warriors, when they were discovered in 1974, now due to the lack of the technology, all of the colors were unfortunately faded away. Uh, but in 1990s, right, because of the advanced technology uh, invented by these archaeologists in this museum, so they ask uh, um, the excavation from that on. Now uh, the warriors' colors had been preserved, but most of the colors they are very sensitive to the humidity and temperature. So the colorful pottery figures they were not uh, just displayed in yeah. the page; they were just uh, protected in the lab. 
um, in the lab. That is not for the public. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, are there any women <laughs> buried? <laughs> so there's no woman buried here, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, because this emperor would like to have the military soldiers with him. And, uh, and uh, the, the only the skeleton of the woman were found yeah. were the, the, the tombs. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. We found some tombs of the prince and princess and also some tombs of the concubine who have no children, they were all buried with the emperor together. You know that the soldiers, they just uh, have the emperor Qin Shu Huang to unite China. So that is why he valued. Now I think that the soldiers and weapons were most important for him. And what animals did they find in the sacrifice pit? Uh, they found some uh, the deer antler and uh, uh, the pig, the chicken, mm. and and also the the the, the bronze birds. Yes, the bronze mm. birds. Yeah. The stable of the horses. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the horses not only for fighting but also for riding. Yeah. Mm. A lot of different animals were found there. Okay, great, right? Now, thank you for your questions. And um, it's really a great pleasure to give this online lecture to all of you. Now, thank you for watching. And uh, our next uh, virtual future will be next uh, Friday evening at the same time, the same uh, Zoom number. And um, thank you again. Thank you, Xufei. My pleasure. And also thank to all of our staff here. They are just behind the scenes, our cameraman <laughs> and the soldiers for helping to open this museum for us. Okay, guys. Now, happy Halloween. Right? See you next time. Bye for now. Bye.